Well, today we come to the last sermon in our series through the kingdom of God. If you missed any, you can go to our website, um, or even better, to our YouTube page. Just look up Parkwood SDA Church. You'll find it, and you can go back, and you can see um, all the previous sermons, or previous special musics, or previous children's stories. It's there as a resource for you. I'm, I'm going to have the deacons start passing out a card. Uh, at the end of this series, it's very appropriate for us to respond in some way to the messages on the kingdom that we've been having. So everyone's going to get a card. They're just going to start passing it out to you now. We'll collect them at the very end of the sermon, but it's something to start thinking and praying about. Uh, Some of you have not been baptized, and we'll want to make that decision today. You know, we're having a baptism October 14. We're filling the baptistry. We've got one baptism scheduled, and we'd like to have more. Uh, Maybe the Lord is calling you to be a part of that baptism on the 14th. We want to help you get ready for that. Let us know on the card. Maybe you have some questions, uh, or you want to visit, or you know somebody that needs a visit. We invite you to put that on the card uh, as well. And if you're thankful for God's grace, and you want to be a part of his kingdom of grace now, and the kingdom of glory in the future, let us know about that. Um, So you can see the various ways to respond Put your name, put your phone number, uh, think about it, pray about it. We'll have a prayer here in just a moment. But as they continue passing out the card, I want you to turn to your neighbor and just think for a second, what's one thing that you're looking forward to in heaven? One thing. Just turn to someone next to you, behind you, in front of you. What's one thing you're looking forward to about heaven? Share with the people around you right now. I'm hearing some good ones being shared here for the ones that I can hear. If you have a good one, just just call it out. Just shout it out to us. What are you looking forward to? Peace. Amen. Oh, seeing Jesus. I saw the two fingers. I thought it was peace. But I'm looking forward to peace also and seeing the Lord. Who else? No more death. death. Birthday hearing. Yes, Kay, it's your birthday. We are so thankful for you. Happy birthday, by the way. And, and Roman Chavez tomorrow, if you're watching online, happy birthday to you tomorrow. Turn it 14. What else are you looking forward to? Health. Not being tired. <laughs> I heard health. Amen to that. I'm looking forward to no allergies. I went to the allergy doctor this week. They have a scale of 0 to 4 plus, and I was a 4 plus plus on eight different things. So if I'm coughing a little bit, it's the allergies. Uh, that I'm dealing with. Uh, That's my belief anyways. (laughs) Not sick. Allergies. (laughs) When you're sick, you know it, right? Uh, What else are you looking forward to? Yeah. Peace. Peace. Amen. Is there one more? Yeah, Frank. Oh, yeah. Yeah, who wants to see their guardian angel? Oh. You know, I remember reading in the writings of Ellen White, and I believe that this comment was inspired. She said that when we get to heaven and we meet our guardian angel and we hear the voice, we will say, I recognize this voice. I've been hearing it my whole life. Maybe not in audible ways, but in impressions and thoughts in our mind, things in our heart. I'm looking forward to that also. Heaven is going to be a wonderful, wonderful place. I think that's why Jesus talked about the kingdom so much. Because if you miss the kingdom, well, you've missed everything, haven't you? It's all about the kingdom. The kingdom of grace now, the forgiveness, the acceptance of of God now, and the kingdom of glory that we get to experience later on. You know, I I have a book on my shelf. Right now it's on my desk. I I love this book, and it has some words. Before we pray, I want to read you, or I'll put it on the screen for you, a couple of quotes from this book. The book title is, You Are What You Love. We usually say, you are what you eat. James K.A. Smith says, you are what you love. We'll put it on the screen here. 
Um, take them a little too far. You know, we may have loaded the wrong. There should be a, a PowerPoint presentation for September 16. Maybe there's a duplicate. Maybe uh, we can check on that. I'll read you, because um, I have so many slides for today. We really want to make sure we get it. Um, let me read you from my notes here. James K.A. Smith says this, to be human is to have a heart. You can't not love. So the question isn't whether you will love something. The question is what you will love as ultimate. You are what you love. We can't help ourselves. We love things. We, love, we have interests in life. You can't help that, but the question we have is, what will we have as our greatest love? He continues, he says, you can't not bet your life on something. You can't not be headed somewhere. We live leaning forward, bent on arriving at the place you long for. All of us are headed somewhere, whether we know it or not. You can't not be headed somewhere, he says. So the question is, well, where are we headed? To be human, he says, we could say is to desire the kingdom, some kingdom. So again, it's not a question of whether you long for some version of the kingdom, but of which version you long for. All of us in our heart of hearts long for a kingdom. The question is, is it God's kingdom or is it the kingdoms of this world? How do we know what kingdom we're longing for? Well, the author Jeff Dyer in his book, Zona, he says, your deepest desire is the one manifested by your daily life and habits. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kiran. Sorry for the confusion. Deepest desire is what is indicated by how you live every single day. So as we prepare to pray this morning, does your everyday life indicate you want to be in the kingdom of God above all else? Or does it indicate we're trying to build up our kingdom of straw down here, one that will pass away? I'm going to have a prayer. You can stay in your seats. Let's ask the Lord to bless us. Father in heaven, some powerful things to consider this morning. We long for heaven. Help our, our actions in our life to correspond with the longings that we've expressed. As we respond, uh, fill out the cards this morning. Uh, bless our decisions. Give us courage to say yes to whatever choice you're leading us to today. Seal these decisions and may all of us hear from your word and your spirit as we talk about your kingdom one last time. In Jesus' name, amen. I should say, as we talk about the kingdom today, because while the series of sermons on the kingdom specifically is coming to a close, we're going to keep on talking about God's kingdom. So I want to talk a little bit about, well, what does it look like? If you've decided to be in God's kingdom now and forever, what does scripture tell us that that looks like in our lives? The very first thing uh, that we find is living in the kingdom requires full commitment. It involves full commitment. Notice what Jesus said in Luke 9, 62. He said to them, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is what? Is fit, thank you, Nina, fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, when God calls you and you say yes, keep on following God. Keep on looking ahead towards God. Don't be trying to live in both kingdoms. It doesn't work. You have to pick. You have to choose. In fact, that's exactly what Ellen White said. Notice this. She said, human beings are left free to choose under which banner they will enlist, which general they will choose. If they take their stand under the banner of Prince Emmanuel, they must make a partial surrender. Tell me, church, what's it say? A complete surrender. I mean, it's the same thing in marriage. You don't want a, a half-committed spouse. 
Hey, I do. 50% of the week, I'm going to be faithful to you, honey. Doesn't work. That's a <laughs> different kind of honey. She loves honey from bees. Just saying, honey. You've got to make a complete surrender to him, willingly and heartily obeying his orders. To those, those who refuse to come under the command of Christ, who think they are at liberty to be a rule to themselves, will be found under the banner opposed to that of Christ. What did Jesus say himself? He said, he who is not with me is what? Against me. Who do, he who does not gather with me is scattering. I appreciated what Jenny was sharing this morning about, hey, let's tell people about what we have going on for senior fellowship. Uh, and, and, and with the kingdom, we've all been invited to invite people to be a part of the kingdom. And if we're not in some way inviting people to be a part of God's kingdom, I think Jesus is saying, in some way, we are scattering. The kingdom, it involves full commitment. Full commitment. You know, when somebody becomes a U.S. citizen, by the way, did it, was anyone born in another country and they became a U.S. citizen over time? Okay, yeah, several people. You know what I'm about to talk about here better than I know about it, but I understand that there is an oath that people take. Um, it's called the Naturalization Oath of Allegiance to the United States of America. Notice what our country asks people to say when you're joining the country. Notice here, I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiances and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty. This sounds like the Apostle Paul talking about the, the powers of darkness, <laughs> right? Uh, to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom I have or heretofore have been subject or citizen, and it continues on. When somebody joins this nation, the nation says, we want you to say no to all other nations that you've been a part of previously and be fully loyal to our kingdom. Now, if you're born here in America, do they go to the hospital and make the baby recite these words before they can leave? No. I've never said these words until today, right now, out loud. Uh, can you be born into the kingdom of God uh, just by default? No. Jesus talked about being born into the kingdom of heaven, but it's something that that you make as a choice, right? So while I, as an American citizen, haven't had to pledge my allegiance in this way, we do it in a lot of other spaces, everybody, when they join the kingdom of heaven, God wants full commitment. Now, we struggle with full commitment, and that's okay. You can just say, God, I want to be a part of your kingdom. I struggle being fully committed. Help me. And he'll say, that's good enough for me. I'll help you be more committed as you follow me in my kingdom. Right? I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. He says, that's good enough for now. We can work with that. The kingdom of God requires deciding to stay and live and follow the king. In John chapter 3, Nicodemus and Jesus had that conversation, and we talked uh, and we mentioned being born into the kingdom. We're born as we decide in our hearts through the Spirit and as we publicly declare it through baptism, the water. We hope and pray that some of you are sensing God's call and will say yes to baptism. Not only is it full commitment, a uh, full commitment, uh, the kingdom of God, living in it now, gives us peace and assurance. Notice this, do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's, what? Good pleasure to give you what? The kingdom. God's not trying to hold it away from us. He wants to give it to us. He wants us to be a part of it. We can have peace and assurance in that. And in John 14, we remember Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. You've got a, a suite in the kingdom with your name on it. A mansion. 
Being part of the kingdom today means valuing God's kingdom above everything else. But seek ye when no other distraction is calling you the kingdom of heaven, right? If there's nothing else on TV, seek the kingdom of God first. What's it say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Jesus emphasized it. And in the Lord's Prayer, we say, your kingdom come. Which means your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're asking, valuing God's kingdom above all things. And that's why Jesus made extreme statements like this. Not to be taken to the full extent literally, but notice the impact here. If your eye causes you to sin, what should we do with it? Get rid of it. Now please, don't take out your eye. That's not what Jesus intended, although some people have done that. But if there's something causing you to go into sin, get rid of it. If it's your TV, get rid of it. If it's your smartphone, get rid of it. If it's your roommate, find a different roommate. Right? Now, if it's your kids, please don't get rid of your kids, but we got to find ways. Jesus was serious about this. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes and to be cast into the hellfire. Valuing God's kingdom above everything else is what he's talking about. Get rid of the things in your life that are causing you to go back to the kingdom of darkness and pursue the kingdom of God full-heartedly. Now, another thought. Sometimes Christians want to say, well, well the law's been done away with. There's no, no law. Think about it. God's the king, and he has a kingdom. Are there any kingdoms that don't have laws? It doesn't make any sense. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. And notice these words here. I love these words here. All our activities, all our business arrangements should be in perfect accord with the Lord's commands. In other words, think about the way you live your life and try to live your life following after God in every detail. The laws of God's kingdoms must be obeyed by the subjects of that kingdom. Our zeal for the advancement of God's kingdom is a mark is to mark us as faithful subjects to the cross of Christ. This is a manuscript from the writings of one of our founders, Ellen White. And notice what she says next, which is really important. The only way that it is possible for men or women to be happy is by rendering what? Obedience to the laws of the kingdom. Sometimes we think, because the devil has deceived us, that we'll be happier if we disobey God. For those of us who've been around a while, how's that gone for you? No. It doesn't go well. You might be happier, you think, for a little while, but consequences catch up to you. And I am so happy to be a free person, not in prison, for the things I did, or for for things that I could have done had I disobeyed God. Amen? Amen? I'm so happy not to have consequences from certain behaviors and choices I could have made were I not deciding to follow after God. Our lives are demonstrably happier when we say, okay, you're the king. I will be your servant. I will follow you, King Jesus. What does the kingdom life tell us? It tells us that this world is not our home. It's not our home. Notice uh, from the Hall of Faith, chapter 11 in Hebrews. By faith, Abraham, uh, he dwelt, Abraham dwelt in the land of promise as in a what? So this is the land that God promised to give to him, and he's living there as if he's just temporarily there. Dwelling in what? Tents. Because he, with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise, for he waited for the what? The city which has what? It has foundations, whose builder and maker is who? God. Abraham was promised the land, and when he got to the land, he says, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I'm waiting for the city that God has prepared, the city that we're all waiting for. Notice, continuing on, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, the promises of their heavenly home. 
But having seen them afar off, they were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and what? Pilgrims. In other words, they're just passing through this world. By the way, if you're a pilgrim, if you're a traveler, if you've ever gone on a, a, a trip where you're traveling a lot, do you want to have 50 bajillion suitcases with you? You can't do it. I'm going to go travel through Europe, and I'm going to take half my house with me. No, oh, the young people today, they take a backpack, right? Clothes that they can keep washing in the sink and all sorts of things, right? You travel light because you're just traveling through. This world is not our home. The kingdom of God reminds us there's a better home. This is a temporary home. We're just passing through. What should we prioritize? They're strangers and pilgrims on earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And then verse 16. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. I tell you what. I love our country, but our country is propagating this myth called the American dream. And it's Basically, a plan where you set up your own kingdom here on this earth and you forget about God's kingdom. That's the effect of the plan. i got to build up my little empire here. It's all about me and protecting what I've got. That's not pilgrim lifestyle. That's not this lifestyle that, that the kingdom is most important and that's what I have to sink my treasure into. I'm not saying it's wrong to have homes and those sorts of things, but we have to be very mindful with what we have and how we use it and how we view it. Because if we're not careful, we're going to try to hold on to the things that we have and they might just lead us away from Jesus. This world and this stuff you have is not your own. The kingdom reminds us we're going to a better place. Streets of gold, as we heard in the children's story. Pavement. Harold, sorry, but that chain you found, just part of the pavement. You know that. <laughs> I'd love to go out with you some of that. That sounds really fun. We're just passing through. That's what we're doing. Romans 3.20, where is our citizenship? It's in heaven. We get so nationalistic and territorial. We're citizens of heaven. God owns the whole world. This world is not our home. And we eagerly wait a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only does the kingdom remind us that this world's not our home, it reminds us that we are equal and we, are, and we belong. Used in a different sense here, uh, these words strangers and pilgrims. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners. In other words, you're not outcasts. You're not people who don't have a home. But you, because they accepted Jesus... They were fellow citizens and saints with the members of the household of God. When you accept Jesus, you belong. We are all equal. And we are all saved by the same blood of Jesus. So we need to be careful how we talk to each other, how we view each other. We are all together members of the same household. And finally, what does living in the kingdom look like? Well, it means that we want to share the kingdom. What does Matthew 24, verse 14 say? This gospel, this good news of the kingdom, we preach to all the world as a witness, to all the nations, and then the end will come. If you want to see the kingdom come, start sharing the kingdom, the good news about Jesus and his plan for us now and his plan for us later. That's what it's all about. Notice the language. When you start to see the kingdom language in Scripture, you see it in other places. Ephesians, or 2 Corinthians 5.20. Now then, we are what? Ambassadors. You need ambassadors if you're part of a kingdom. Right? Paul was writing here, we're ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us and we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God needs you as an ambassador because there are people in the kingdom of darkness that he wants to bring into his kingdom of light. By the way, if you were elected to the post of an ambassador, 
Do you suppose the, the king or the president of your country would want you to make your country look bad? It, would it be good to have an ambassador that's slovenly and rude and, and just really a, not a good citizen? If we are Christ's ambassadors, how should we represent the king? We should think about how do we live? How do we dress? How do we talk? How do we interact? How do we love other people? It should matter to us because we are ambassadors for a world who's dying to know the king that we know. Notice here from Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings. The kingdom will not come until the good tidings of his grace have been carried to all the earth. Hence, as we give ourselves to God and, other, and win other souls to him, we hasten his coming kingdom. Only those who have devoted themselves to his service, they alone pray in sincerity, thy kingdom come. So if we want to say, Lord, have your kingdom come, we can only do it sincerely if we are in some way serving the king. Helping bring that kingdom sooner. I wonder if there are people in your family who need to see you as an ambassador for the king. I wonder if there are people in your neighborhoods that are looking for a better kingdom than, the, than what this world has to offer. Notice what Jesus said in Luke 9.60. He's talking to people who just are trying to make excuses. He said to them, let the dead bear their own dead, spiritual dead, but you go preach the kingdom of God. In other words, stop making excuses. Just proclaim my kingdom to others. What have we seen this morning? Living in the kingdom now means full commitment. It means we have peace and assurance in our hearts and lives. It means we value God's kingdom above everything else. It means that we want to obey our king. It means the world is not our home. And it means we are equal and belong and that we share the kingdom with others. Now, we probably could have come up with more things this morning, but that's all we had time for. I want to share just a little bit more with you before we close. Notice this beautiful Quotation. This is from Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings. Again, a really good book. This is commenting on the Lord's Prayer. The first half of the prayer, Jesus taught us in regard to the name and kingdom and will of God. When you have thus made God's service your first interest, you may ask with confidence that your own needs will be supplied. In other words, if you're working for the king, he's going to supply you with what you need to carry out his mission for you. If you have renounced self and given yourself to Christ, you're a member of the family of God. And everything in the Father's house is for you. You have access to the boundless resources of omnipotence. All the treasures of God are open to you, both in the world that is now and that which is to come. The ministry of angels. These are more benefits of living in the kingdom. The gifts of the Spirit, the labor of his servants, all are for you. The world and everything in it, it's yours so far as you can do good. Even the enmity of the wicked will prove a blessing by disciplining you for heaven. If you are Christ's, all things are yours. Is it worth living in the kingdom of grace now? A hundred, a thousand times, yes. Absolutely, it's worth it. As a reminder... Previously, we looked at some of these things. In God's kingdom, now we have a place reserved for us in heaven. We have acceptance and we have forgiveness. We have salvation and adoption and all spiritual blessings. What else do we have? We have peace in our hearts now. We have joy and forever pleasures. We have rest, Matthew eleven twenty eight tells us. We have the Holy Spirit and we have power. We have wisdom and guidance. What else do we have now? We have connection with Jesus. We have changed hearts, new natures that God wants to give us, and we have reward now and forever. And that's just now. We haven't even talked in detail about heaven. But let me just whet your appetite a little bit. 
before we close out this morning, I'm just going to read to you a few verses from the very end of the story. A few verses from Revelation chapter 21 and 22. Then we're going to sing a song together, going to pick up the cards, and we're going to close out with prayer. If you want to close your eyes and just think about these things, imagine the glories, you can do that. Eyes open, eyes closed, whatever you want. These are the words of John, the revelator. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Can you imagine the city? And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will dwell with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. The nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth shall bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day, for there is no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. His servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads, and there shall be no night there. They shall need no lamp nor, nor light of the sun, for the Lord gives them light and they shall reign forever and ever. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. If your imagination is as good as mine, we're still only one teeny speck of how awesome it is. Is it worth living in the kingdom now? Absolutely, it's worth living in the kingdom now, even if there was no kingdom later. But there's a kingdom that's coming, a kingdom of glory, and God wants everyone to be a part of it. Have you made your choice, friends? Those of you watching at home, have you made your choice to be a part of this kingdom? Each day we make that decision. Each day in our hearts and lives we live out that decision. In just a moment, we're going to sing a song together. We're going to sing number 626. In a little while, we're going home. But I invite you uh, to fill out this card if you haven't yet. If you need more time, you can give it to me at the door. But as we sing this song, I'm going to have the deacons come forward, and they're going to begin collecting these cards. Uh, and I'm excited to see how the Lord is going to bless you as you follow through on whatever decision God has impressed you to make. So I invite you, uh, not only to fill out the card, but if you're done, pull out a hymnal. I believe the number is 626. The song is, In a Little While, We're Going Home. And if you're ready, you can stand together, and we're going to sing verse 1, 2, and 4 as the deacons collect the cards.
Amen. I can't wait to go home to heaven. Can't you? Lord, we are looking forward to that day. But while we're here, there's a work to do. And there's good news about your awesome kingdom to share. Give us opportunities and may we take them this day and this week forevermore until we see you coming in the clouds of glory. This is our prayer. Let all God's citizens say, Amen and Amen. You may be seated. If you still were working on your card, you can give it to me at the door. And young people, see Miss Anita for a special prize as you memorize that verse. God bless you. Stick around for prayer up front if you want in the committee room, and we will see you very, very soon.